And this shows the, uh, the uh, revenues that went to the New York Stock Exchange member firms. I peaked out at something like $340 billion. This comes from the Securities Industry Association. Half of this is paid out in compensation. And so you had kids, like 20 some odd year old kids, pulling down millions of dollars a year. You had last year with these hedge fund guys, you had over 10 guys who made over a billion dollars in compensation for themselves. And they, they made so much money, they didn't even know what to do with it. And go to the next slide, please. This is a slide, I'm not picking on Richard Fold for any particular reason. Now, he was the CEO chairman of Lehman Brothers. This is his house. I mean, it looks, it looks like a hotel. So these guys, they're buying 40,000 foot houses all around the planet, uh, $200 million airplanes, spend another $100 million outfitting these planes with hot tubs and saunas on the plane. Imagine having a plane with a hot tub and a sauna. Uh, they're buying 400 foot boats. There was an article in the major media a couple of years ago, these five bankers go out to eat, spent $62,000 for a meal. And how do you spend $62,000 for a meal? Well, it turns out they had four bottles of wine for $15,000 a bottle. And go to the next slide, please. And look what happened to bank revenues as a result of breaking the last link to gold. So bank revenues peaked out at something like $550 billion. Now, what is the product or service that you get from banks that they should make so much revenue? And by the way, half of this money went to pay compensation. And go to the next slide, please. And this shows the profit to the banks af after the compensation. So it peaked out at something like $130 billion. To give you a feel for how much money that is, that's more than the gross amount that we got from the car industry. But from the car industry, we got 20 million cars. From the banks, you got canceled checks and bank statements. You go to the next slide, please. And while this is happening, the politicians at the national level are making all kinds of promises to the people. Uh, these numbers come from the Heritage Foundation. Uh, some estimates are as high as $75 trillion is for Medicare, for Medicaid, for Social Security. These promises are not going to be kept. And so the people who really, who, who really are at the disadvantage while these financial guys are making all this money are the people in Montana, hardworking farmers, people who manufacture. They're depending on promises from government. The government, the, the politicians are depending that this fraud will continue. It is not continuing. And go to the next slide, please. And this shows the breakdown between the manufacturing profits and financial profits. These numbers come from the national income product accounts. Look what happened to manufacturing in this country since we've uh, broke the last tie to gold. And look what happened to the profits. And again, according to the national income product accounts, it peaked out at 40 some odd percent. There's a better analysis uh, that was done by the University of Syracuse using a more expansive uh, definition of what constitutes the financial sector. And they claimed it uh, uh, peaked out at something like 63%. I go to the next slide, please. This I call fraud at the Fed. People want to believe in their institutions. I mean, even if uh, something bad happens, you want to feel that it's an honest mistake. Now, the, the information on this slide comes from a book that Paul Volcker wrote with Toya Godin. Toya Godin was his uh, retired counterpart from the Bank of Japan. And in this uh, passage, Volcker describes a situation where the Federal Reserve helped phony up the balance sheet of the Bank of Mexico. And this is an out-and-out -out fraudulent transaction. So as we transfer money each month the day before the reserves were added up, and then we take it back the next day. And the question that this raises for me, if the Federal Reserve is, is uh, uh, going to engage in these, this kind of fraud, where are the limits? What might they not do? And the answer is, there are no limits. And when Alan Greenspan said that the Federal Reserve would create money without, uh, without limit, we're talking about the complete destruction of the dollar. Which is why, again, this bill that you're considering is so important, because at least you'd mitigate the damage for some uh, people in Montana. And go to the next slide, please. And here's a line from Paul Boker, uh, the author of this uh, 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 slide. Uh, and he has this right. He says, the global economy requires a global currency. You can't have volatility between uh, uh, foreign currencies. It destroys the international division of labor. And go to the next slide, please. I'm right down to the end now, folks. And so what is that global currency going to be? Is it going to be that which is mandated by the Constitution, the choice of free people? Or is it going to be an irredeemable paper ticket? And go to the next slide, please. And in the event that you have gold, again, which the founders promised us, gold and silver, you have stable interest rates, stable foreign exchange rates. The whole system is honest. You don't have any special privileges. You have the rule of law and, most important, promises of future payment get kept. Whereas if you have paper money, 
you have volatile interest rates, you have volatile foreign exchange, the whole thing is flat out dishonest. You have special privileges for banks, we didn't have time to, today, but you have emergency powers, president's directives, executive orders, and most importantly, promises of future payment get broken. And we have plenty of examples of that with steel workers, with textile workers, with airline workers, and soon uh, 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 auto workers lose their pensions, lose their promises of future payment, all as a result of the irredeemable paper ticket money. And the solution for this, folks, and this is a real step in the right direction, I commend you very strongly for what you're doing considering this bill, is to reassert the monetary powers and disabilities of the Constitution. And you folks are looking at Article 1, Section 10. And the last slide, please. And this is a line from the American Federation of Labor in the election of 1896. They said, gold is the standard of every great civilization. And that is a fact. And thank you very much for your kind attention.